What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell, and in today's video, we will be recounting the famed matches between Garry Kasparov and Deep Blue, the chess playing IBM developed supercomputer. The match started out on good terms, but eventually descended into controversy, secrets, and a glaring lack of communication from IBM. The chaos started with a benign 1996 match that began and ended well on both sides. Kasparov considered it less of a chess match than an experiment that could help develop the game, computer science, and humanity as a whole. It was man versus machine, and Kasparov appreciated it as an idea, and he won the 1996 match handily with a score of 4-2, IBM was relatively uninvolved in the beginning stages, but as public interest skyrocketed following the first match, they went all in and assembled a team of top computer programmers and chess grandmasters to enhance Deep Blue and challenged Kasparov to a rematch the following year. Kasparov agreed, and any idea of him losing the match was seen as silly. It was a computer, and none of our computers today that are learning to walk and speak and drive cars. This was the 90s, and a computer beating a human world champion at anything was preposterous, which set up just how much of a surprise Kasparov and the public were in for. Shortly prior to meeting with Kasparov in New York City, IBM became suspiciously secretive about the project, not allowing their opponent to see Deep Blue's games, programs, or developments. Game 1 began, and the world watched as Kasparov opened with the Zuckator opening and steamrolled the machine in 45 moves. Deep Blue could not have cared less about King's safety. It swallowed every piece Kasparov threw at it, allowing him to successfully pounce on the computer's unprotected king. He won easily and left the game in good spirits. All was well. The following day saw a sharp turn as Deep Blue absolutely crushed Kasparov, playing an amazing Anatoly Karpov-style game, rejecting all of Kasparov's sacrifices, diligently protecting its king, and forcing Kasparov into a losing position. It went from basic to world-class gameplay overnight. Obviously, this made no logical sense. So following the game, Kasparov asked the Deep Blue team if he could take a look at the program. IBM responded with a hard no, then a yes, and then changed their minds again and even put guards around the computer to keep Kasparov and anyone else from taking a look. It was obvious that IBM didn't just see this as an experiment anymore, and it also seemed clear that they were hiding something. Kasparov accused the Deep Blue team of cheating with human assistance, and he could hardly be blamed. On top of having guards defending a mere computer, they began taking extreme measures to keep the controversy quiet in the media outlets, and the public was presented with a square, safe match with everyone on good terms. Even more suspicious was Deep Blue's one move, one of its best moves, that required a deep level of positional understanding and took 10 full minutes to play. For a computer calculating 200 million moves a second, this is well beyond range. This fantastic performance was soon followed by Deep Blue crashing during a match, and as IBM frantically tried to restore their chess player to working order, Kasparov's reaction was to merely look to his coach and ask what was happening. IBM jumped on this chance to accuse Kasparov of cheating. To put it simply, Kasparov was fed up. He didn't want to return for Game 3. He was over it. He was, however, talked into finishing the match, and the following rounds, 3, 4, and 5, all ended in draws. Every press conference showed Kasparov looking more depressed, anxious, and troubled, as he had an increasingly difficult time psychologically with the whole ordeal. Game 6 saw Kasparov play arguably the worst game of his entire career, losing in 19 moves with the black pieces. Kasparov was done. He didn't care about the match anymore, he just wanted the heavy burden off his shoulders. Kasparov is known to always fight for the win and have great nerves, yet he resorted to the Karl Kahn, one of the most drawish openings known to mankind. He played quickly and collapsed into subpar chess. 
the six-game series ended with a score of 3.5 to 2.5, and and for the first time, a machine beat a world chess champion in tournament format, or so the record says. If the controversy weren't high enough, IBM never did allow any research to be done on Deep Blue. They tore it down, locked it away, and refused to ever let it play Kasparov or anyone else again. They knew Kasparov didn't perform well, and that led directly to their business booming and their stock rising 15%. I personally believe this wasn't just a series of suspicious mishaps, but that Kasparov was right to accuse IBM of invoking human assistance. What do you all think? Did Deep Blue get help, or was it all honesty and fairness on IBM's part? As always, guys, I had a ton of fun making this video, and if you all enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out next week when we'll be analyzing games 1, 2, and 6 of Kasparov's 1997 match with Deep Blue. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. I really appreciate the support, and as always, I'm wishing you all an amazing day. Peace.